is funny. Fernando de Rojas, La Celestina. Hello again and welcome back. In chapter four, Sancho returns to Don Quixote's house prepared to tell Carrasco about the theft of his ass and what he did with the 100 escudos. His explanation of how someone robbed his ass from beneath him while he was sleeping is funny and absurd. He took the opportunity to suspend me on four stakes which he placed at the four sides of my saddle in such a way that he left me mounted on it and took my gray from underneath me without my even sensing it. We are reminded of those figures propped up on crutches in Dali's paintings. Sancho also reminds us of his extreme emotional attachment to his ass. Tears welled up in my eyes and I made a great lamentation. He then tells how he recovered the animal while in the company of Princess Mikomikona. Traveling with my lady, Princess of Mikomikon, I saw my ass and on him I saw that Ginés de Pasamonte traveling dressed like a gypsy. Did you know Sancho's ass is a most important moral symbol in part one? Its disappearance coincides with the squire's nefarious fantasy to become a slaver, and its reappearance coincides with his recognition that this fantasy will not be possible. Carrasco's response focuses on a specific narrative inconsistency. It's funny because it takes the wind out of Sancho's sails. The error doesn't lie there, but in the fact that before the donkey reappeared, the author says that Sancho was riding on that same gray. Sancho has no explanation. To that, I don't know how to respond except that the historian got confused or else the printer made a mistake. Carrasco presses Sancho harder on the matter of the 100 escudos. What happened to the 100 escudos? Did they vanish? Now Sancho gets defensive. He admits that he spent the money on his family and ultimately blames his wife. If after so much time I had returned without a copper and without my ass, a black future would be waiting for me. Still, he insists that he has nothing to apologize for. I'll answer to the king himself in Presson, and nobody has any reason to stick his nose into whether or not I took them or whether or not I spent them. He even claims the escudos are a kind of payment for his many beatings in the company of his master, noting that they would not amount to half of what he is owed. Another hundred escudos wouldn't amount to half of what I'm owed. And he protests again that nobody has a right to judge him. Let each man put his hand over his heart and not judging white as black and black as white. For we are as God made us and often much worse. Note race here. What is the real problem represented by the lost 100 escudos? A, the passionate character of Don Quixote? B, the moral character of Sancho Panza? C, the phlegmatic character of Sanson Carrasco? Correct answer, B, the moral character of Sancho Panza. Carrasco makes clear that the errors he has mentioned are the main ones, and then he notes that the author plans a sequel. When he finds the history which he seeks with extraordinary diligence, he will have it printed right away, motivated more by earnings than praise. Sancho's reaction recalls the third censor's approval at the beginning of part two, which also highlighted Cervantes's financial motives for writing. The author's interested in money and profit? This is huge. Cervantes was indeed on the cusp of being able to make a living as an author. For Sancho, the idea of an author recording their exploits is the perfect excuse for another adventure. If my master would take my advice, we'd already be out in those fields righting wrongs and undoing injustices, as is the habit and custom of good knights errant. At these words by Sancho, the narrator tells us that the neighing of Rocinante reached their ears, which neighing Don Quixote took as a very good omen. So they plan a third sally. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, 
you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.